What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's match review of Chelsea's win against Norwich City away at Carrow Road. 3-2 epic scenes with Chelsea's academy youngsters doing bits for young coach Frank Lampard. Lovely, lovely scenes indeed. A lot of stuff to get into today which I hope you guys really enjoy but before we do get into today's content I would like to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit that bell notification icon because you know what? I upload every single day and I want you guys to keep up with the content and if you want to help me out why not like this video as well. So Chelsea went into this game winless in the Premier League. Sure there's been some positive signs of good spells of performances from Frank Lampard's Chelsea but they were under pressure going up to a promoted side without a win. Now it doesn't tell the full story Norwich City are a very very good side and very good at home and they've got an incredibly informed striker in Timu Puki. I wonder if I'm pronouncing that right. So they've got a lot going for them and last time they lost at home guess who it was too? That's right, Frank Lampard. It's Derby side around last Christmas, I believe. There's a lot to get into in this game, so let's just bring up the analysis page. So, next to me on the graphic, you can see the two starting lineups for this game for both Norwich City and Chelsea Football Club. Pedro was going to start this game, but he got injured in the warm up. So, Ross Barkley comes in for the Spaniard. And you know what? That results in a very interesting statistic indeed. This was the youngest Chelsea side to be fielded for the last 25 years. The Academy youthful Frank Lampard's Chelsea revolution has truly begun. Right, so let's get into the first half. Chelsea do come out pressing as expected, but perhaps a little less high octane. Now remember, this game was played in a really hot stadium, probably around 30 degrees Celsius. So whether they're less pressing is due to better energy management, which Chelsea absolutely needed to start doing, or maybe the heat, who knows? It could have been a combination of the two, but they certainly looks like they were being a little bit more careful with their explosive early pressing. But it doesn't take long for the drama of this game to begin. Goal, Tammy Abraham, third minute, let's go. As Piliqueta, who's been playing a little bit better of late, runs down the wing, gets right down to the byline, puts in a decent cross to an advancing Tammy Abraham who is in space, hits it on the half volley and puts it bottom right of the goal. Superb goal, lovely finish, lovely assist, lovely start from Chelsea Football Club. The nice thing at the end of this goal, Abraham beelines it to Frank Lampard for a warming embrace and all the players go around. It's really touching. Say what you want about Maurizio Sarri, whether you liked him or not, you did not get this kind of camaraderie and it looked like it meant so much to both player and coach and was just lovely scenes all round. But then came the sixth minute and Norwich scored. <laughs> a goal scored from Canswell. Norwich immediately commit loads of players forward after conceding and they put on a really heavy spell of pressure against Chelsea's shaky back line. Puki, that man, gets a wonderful assist for the on-running Cantwell. He scores a goal that Kepa can't do anything about. Levels up the scoreline, 1-1. Come up for the seventh minute, Mason mounts up the other end and he's forcing a save from Tim Krul. And you know what? At this point, you're thinking, okay, this game is terrifying and exciting, but the neutrals must be loving it. So the opening 10 minutes actually displays the confidence that Norwich City have got at the moment. They're champions of the second division, they've come into the Premier League, they're not going to change how they play, and they've kind of showed how the way they play can work in the Premier League, and they're not going to have this like inferiority complex at Carrow Road, obviously they've got a very good feel-good factor, the fans are behind them, and the opening stages of this game, I think that was palpable and you can see it. But Chelsea begin to sort of take control of the game a little bit more from the 12th minute onward, they start switching play. Now this is important, I think Frank Lampard's probably told his team, when you're in possession, switch play more and more and more, I think he's even said it in a press conference, tire the opposition out, pull them out of position. It's not vertical tiki taka like Mauricio Sarri's football, but absolutely pull them to left to right and on a hot day like this, that could do some serious damage. A couple minutes later, Chelsea are carving out more and more chances. They look really, really good, um, but again, they look vulnerable to the counter and transition as per usual at this point. But the 17th minute comes and the drama continues. Another Chelsea goal from another Chelsea Academy star at Mason Mount. That boy again, getting another goal two games in a row 
Lovely finish. Pulisic comes with the ball, has a lovely touch, sets up Mason Mount, who puts it past him. Cruel, lovely finish. Not much else to say, but this game's exciting, terrifying, nervy, thrilling, joyful. But the most important thing at this point is Chelsea's two main academy starlets, certainly the ones that aren't injured, have both scored, and the Frank Lampard revolution looks like it's working. Chelsea at this point are looking a lot, lot better, and they're controlling the game. In the 24th minute, there's a scramble in the Norwich box. They're trying to defend from this heavy Chelsea pressure that's being applied. It gets to Tammy Abraham's feet. He tries to score, but there's just too much congestion in the box. Just one minute later, Tim Krul makes a save from a bullet. Christensen header. I say bullet, but it was right at him. Literally inches either side. That is Chelsea 3-1, but unfortunately, he doesn't convert. 29th minute, there's an excellent break from Chelsea, and Jorginho is on the ball at the edge of the box. If he takes this shot early, there's another goal. It's 4-1 Chelsea, but he doesn't release the ball soon enough, and the chance is wasted yet again. Like I said, in terms of the chances they are getting Chelsea, they should absolutely be capitalising and scoring more goals. This genuinely could be 4-1 at this point. But sadly it isn't and the 31st minute brings a Norwich City equaliser. And yes, it's that man, Pookie gets his goal. He plays on the shoulder really, really well, times his run perfectly, splits the defenders, gets to the sort of near post uh, from Kepper and rifles it in. It's a great striker's goal from, you know, a striker that's clearly in very high confidence. So Chelsea could have probably put this game to bed already, yet it's 2-2 and suddenly the similar themes of this season are coming back to haunt Chelsea, Frank Lampard, Chelsea fans, etc. And the confidence isn't high, the game's exciting. But Chelsea, from all the chances they create, they really should be dominating. I'm not saying Norwich are mugs because they are clearly a very good team, or certainly a team in confidence at the moment, but still, Chelsea should have put away these chances. Pookie, now the top scorer in the Premier League. Who'd have thought it? Another nervy moment in the 34th minute for Chelsea. They concede a free kick that Kepa makes a decent enough save of. The rebound comes up, another shot comes in, and fortunately, Kepa is able to gather. The next sort of few minutes are kind of up and down, and I think by this point you can tell both teams are suffering from the heat. The 44th minute Pulisic demonstrates a lovely touch and has a great take within the box but sadly again cannot convert what is a decent chance. The game starts to become a little bit more niggly at this point towards the latter stages of the half. Like I said the heat and the early press from both teams is probably now making the players a bit leggy and like I said it's becoming a bit foully and a bit up and down. Final minute of stoppage time Chelsea do enjoy a good spell of pressure in the Norwich box but they're sort of playing around the box the combinations aren't there enough and they take too much time and what again started as a really good chance and with Ross Barkley getting on the end of the ball and firing it over and it's over. So half time 2-2 and I've pulled up the half time statistics on the graphic next to me. Generally as you can see a lot of the statistics are very even but what's most notable is Chelsea have more shots. Obviously the same amount on target but the fact how they've got more shots is testament to them having a lot more scoring chances. Not being clinical, like I said, they could have had four or five goals in this half, but sadly they hadn't, and this puts them in the position now where they come out in the second half with a low confidence like they have been before. Norwich can absolutely win this game and maybe even run away with it. But Chelsea did score two very good goals in this half, and if it wasn't for some defensive frailties, you know, it would have been a good positive half for Chelsea. I'm not going to go through all the player performances, but I guess notable performances from this half would be obviously Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham for their goals. And although a lot of people are sort of split on Christian Pulisic here, he did get the assist and I think he did play well. He was bright enough to sort of move the ball around. As Pulisic has been better as well of late. A little bit disappointing in the first half for me was Emerson. He has been so good in the recent games in terms of how he's got on the ball, how many defensive interceptions he's made, how many dribbles, take-ons, crosses, shots. He really, maybe it was a sort of tactical instruction to not play down the left flank as much, but he wasn't, he didn't impose himself on the game, or certainly that half, as much as he can. Right, come off the second half. No changes at the break, but I've switched the graphic to the Chelsea 11 that finished the game. When the game resumes, Mount immediately finds himself in a really positive place and forces a save for Tim Krul, but again, more shots, too central in the goal and too easy for the keeper. 47th minute, Christian Pulisic wakes up, does a good run, but 
has a shot, not too much conviction in it, and hits the side netting. It's not the first time we've seen Christian Pulisic hit the side netting for Chelsea this season. Norwich look unsettled in the opening five minutes, and it is all Chelsea putting the pressure on. You know what? This is a positive sign. In Frank Lampard's short Chelsea tenure, Chelsea have come out in the second half often looking frail, but in fact, it looks the opposite in this game. 10 minutes into the second half, Chelsea are absolutely the better side, but again, they haven't capitalised off good spells of pressure or possession or just playing in Norwich's defensive third. More of the same in the 58th minute, heavy Chelsea pressure, but they do not capitalise. Barkley has the ball, he sort of does that thing when he dribbles all the way around the 18-yard box, does very well to keep hold of the ball and retain possession but nothing comes of it and it's just a frustrating lack of combinations. 61st minute, Emerson forces a save from Tim Krul, yet another save. Norwich break down the other side, but Pukki can't get hold of it. Chelsea go back up the other side, it's going up and down, up and down, but yet again, they cannot capitalise from the Norwich side that have been pulled out of position. 64th minute-ish, Norwich are finally starting to impose themselves on this half. And they're settling into it a little bit more. And are Chelsea going to really rue the missed chances that they've done all throughout this game? Because if they will feel so hard done by if they lose this match at this point. And you know what? Heads have dropped so far on the Lampard or concentrations dropped. So anything can happen at this point. Barkley forces a save in the 66th minute by Tim Krul. And you know what? It's getting a little bit frustrating. And you think, is this going to happen for Chelsea? And you know what? It does. Come off the 69th minute goal. The brace is completed for young Chelsea Academy starlet, whatever you want to say, waxing lyrical about this proper Chelsea young lad. Anyway, he scores a lovely goal. Maybe like 20, 25 yards out, I think. Anyway, it's an absolute rocket, a lovely, lovely finish. It's Tammy second. The score sheet now is looking pretty tasty. Two for Tammy, one for Mason Mount. So, for the third time in the game, Norwich have gone behind. And again, they've responded well like they have each time. They've gone down the pitch a bit more and suddenly you just don't have confidence in this Chelsea side to protect the you know protect the lead and it does look like they could maybe do something Norwich City and in the 72nd minute Norwich get a corner and from said set piece they hit the crossbar Chelsea Football Club are handing out free heart attacks this season. 75th minute brings a change. Big French man Olivier Giroud comes on for Tammy Abraham. Some people at this point were disappointed there's no Michy Batshuayi. But when you're protecting a 1-0 lead and there's like 10-15 minutes left, you can understand that. Giroud's good in both boxes and that includes defending set pieces because he's big and dominant in the air. So I understand the move from Frank Lampard bringing on Giroud. And in the 78th minute, Chelsea are doing a bit better. Go up the other end. Ross Barkley forces a corner from another shot. The 79th minute, Chelsea actually have a goal disallowed by Kurt Zouma. Um, both Giroud and Tim Krul were jumping for the ball. Giroud only had eyes on the ball, but apparently Tim Krul already claimed it and he knocked it out of his hands. Therefore, the goal was disallowed. I think strikers will be frustrated at that because he only had eyes for the ball. Um, maybe soft, but whatever. You understand why it was disallowed. For the final 10 minutes of the game, Daniel Farker plays all his cards and makes a triple change in the hope that fresh legs in a hot day can make the difference in the final 10 minutes. Then come off the 84th minute, Pulisic makes way for Willian. Willian was really poor last time out, so you can understand maybe only giving him five minutes in this game and to only run around and be good defensively, hopefully. That might be Lampard's thinking. Another interesting change in the 90th minute. Mason Mount comes off, who's I think a bit blowing out his ass now, he's pretty knackered. And uh, Alonso comes on for him, so that's interesting. So Emerson moves forward into the sort of left wing, left mid spot, and Marcus Alonso takes the left back role. The fresh legs to do the defensive work and maybe Emerson to just be settled in the game and do combinations further up the pitch. I like the pragmatism. 92nd minute, Barkley forces another save from Krul and it's yet another corner. So full time comes, Chelsea 3, Norwich City 2. A very nervy and exciting game, open and attacking, and some good goals in there. Pukki got a goal and assist, so his narrative continues this season. Uh, the Chelsea narrative is superb as well, because it's both Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount who got on the score sheet, and Tammy got two goals. So it's very exciting, and you know, a lot that the papers can print about that. I've thrown the stats up next to me on the screen, so you can have a look. As you can see, loads of shots by Chelsea. 
Generally, a lot of stuff was even, but in terms of chances created and shots being taken, really, it's all Chelsea. I think a really important talking point here is that Chelsea came out in the second half with a much more professional performance than they have been in the last two or three games under Frank Lampard. They've been coming out, they've been conceding early often, and heads drop and then they don't finish off the chances to win the game. This was in fact the opposite from Frank Lampard's Chelsea in this game. They came out, they put the pressure on, they were good defensively when they needed to be and they got the winning goal from young Tammy Abraham. So really superb and positive signs all in I'd say. Anyway that is enough of this analysis screen for the moment. Frankie Lampard gets his first win. Positive, exciting moments in the game, as there has been even in the United's huge loss and the Super Cup, and even the game against Leicester in the opening stages. People can see what Frank Lampard wants to do. Direct, exciting football, he wants goals from his midfielders, shock horror, and he wants his team to play high. I don't think he wants this space between the lines, I think that might be a lack of confidence from certain players that are on the pitch at the time. Chelsea can perform better defensively. They've absolutely got the firepower to be a top four side. I know people talk about Arsenal and their forward line being superb, and it is, but Chelsea have goals from midfield and they needed that under Sarri. They didn't have it, but now they've got it. So provided they can sort out their defensive problems and Chelsea do have good defenders I've always maintained and subscribed to that fact that Chelsea have good defenders so if they can sort themselves out defensively tactically they'll be in business especially now Tammy's got a couple of goals Giroud's gonna fancy getting some now and you know when Michy comes back into the team he knows he's got to play incredibly well to even get a sniff so the competition is incredibly healthy in the strike position as is it in the attacking midfielders sort of situation, as well as the wingers. We've got Hudson, Adoy and Pulisic, and you've still got Pedro and William. So competition is healthy, and there's a lot of competition there. But it's over. It was dramatic. Chelsea got the win. What do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on certain player performances. How do you think Lampard should change? You just your general thoughts. I want to get down and read your comments so make sure you comment. Also, if you have enjoyed the video, please do like the video guys, that would mean a lot. Subscribe if you are new and remember you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick and that is on Instagram and Twitter. Other than that guys, I'm going to keep moving so I hope you guys have enjoyed the video today. Enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.